All right, y'all, I'm back for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season five, episode five. We get um, the continuation of uh, Jocelyn and Carly going back and forth, and, you know, Jocelyn is still threatening her, and pretty much is saying that all these hoes need to respect her. They need to put some respect on her goddamn name. And, um, you know, Carly, you know, keeps on telling her to put the shit out there, and, you know, Carly continues to tell her that she never talked about, uh, Hosseline or whatever. Hosseline is like, you know, telling her it's not that I don't care. Carly pretty much interjects and says, no, you don't care and that you're evil. Hosseline is like, I don't see how I'm evil and everything. Being evil would be kicking her fucking ass. But I'm inviting her to my party. But if she keep my name in her mouth, this information is going on their blogs. And I'm like... And mind you, she's in in the confessional with the envelope in her hand. And I'm pretty much convinced at this point that it's probably some shit we already know about Hosseline. Or it's probably nothing at all. She just wants to scare Carly Red. Because I'm like, why do you still have this envelope in your hand in the confessional? Inquiring minds just want to know. I'm just saying. But anyways, um... She starts saying something to Carly Red, and Carly, she gets kind of flustered, and, you know, she just leaves because she's over it. Kirk and Rashida, um, they're having a, um, showcasing or whatever you want to call it, um, for Kelsey. You know, Kelsey is performing and everything. Um, I don't really remember the performance too much, so maybe it wasn't that good to me if I don't really remember shit. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't know. Like, um... I do agree with Rashida, with Rashida, you know, that she needs to work on her stage presence and, you know, work on projecting her voice and everything. Um, you know, they pretty much, she, you know, ask her, you know, am I signed yet or whatever? And they tell her it's still a work in progress on signing you. Um, Kelsey, she kind of feels disappointed or whatever. She feels played because she feels like that she killed it. And, you know, they're too worried about everybody else and all this other stuff. I was like, well, I don't know if you killed it, but, um, I'm just saying, because like I said, I could barely hear her. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't know. I, maybe if she performs and gets better, then maybe I could really make a better judgment. But I just, you know... I mean, how did y'all feel about the performance? Did y'all feel like it was all right? Or, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it was bad, but I don't feel like she killed it. Let's make that very clear. You know what I'm saying? But y'all let me know how y'all feel. Um, anyways, Rashida tells her that, you know, she pretty much wants Kirk to talk to Scrappy or whatever. So, um, they go to where Jock and Scrappy is at. Jock is pretty much the mediator in the situation and, you know, asks them where they're at at this point in their, you know, friendship or whatever. Scrappy pretty much just expresses himself and tells him, like, pre pretty much if the shoe was on the other foot and you was at risk of losing your daughter this day and the third, that he would have let Kirk know known what it was. He was like, Kirk let him know the day of what was going on and this day and the third. And Kirk says that he didn't mean to diss Scrappy or nothing like that. And then he reali actually realizes that, you know, he was wrong and everything. And they make up the end on that one. <laughs> okay. Um, Stevie J and Hosseline, they um they go to this venue for the party, for the viewing party that Hosseline is going to throw. And, um, you know, she's talking about how she's going to drop a bombshell here, a bombshell there. Might be a spe special guest and all this other bullshit. And see, here's my thing, Hosseline. You know, I like you and everything, but at the same time, I do have to agree with some of the other YouTubers. Like, how you going to sit up here and talk about one minute? Like, in one minute, you sit up here saying being mature and being grown, but then in the next breath, you sit up here... Talking about dropping bombshells and shit. Like, how does that go hand in hand? You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, you know, um, she sits up here and, you know, talks to Stevie about how this is just going to be great and how they're going to have champagne and caviar and lobster. And, you know, um, 
at the party and you know he's like uh you know don't rub it in you know what i'm saying and stevie says that you know uh jocelyn pretty much wants to invite everyone to this party who hates her or whatever and he thought that she was that they were coming back on some pretty much mature shit but it looks like she has some tricks up her sleeve and i was like get that right and um he tells her that he invited kk for lunch or whatever Hosseline calls KK a hoodlum and everything. And then, um, you know, Hosseline was like, you know, I didn't expect this to come up so soon. But now that she's here, you know, coming here or whatever, um, I'm going to just let it, I'm going to just put the, you know, throw the cat out the bag or whatever, pretty much. And, um, you know, she was like, because everybody knows the Puerto Rican princess doesn't like secrets. <laughs> and, um, you know, so Hosseline, she pretty much puts it out there. That she heard that Stevie and KK had sex. And they both looking at each other like, no, like that never happened. And they said the only relations that they have is brother and sister. And um, Stevie says that he's into a lot of shit, but incest ain't one of them. And I, and I feel him on that because like, um, I have guys that I call my brothers, but I would never like do anything with them because... I look at them as my blood, you know what I'm saying? Even though they're technically not my blood, I do look at them as my blood. And, you know, it'd be a lot of motherfuckers out here that be calling people they bro and they sister, but really be fucking them behind closed doors. And, you know, it's just like, so I feel him on that. Like, I feel like that's incest too. But at the same time, this is Stevie we talking about here. So if it do end up coming out for real that they really have relations, I wouldn't be surprised. But, um, anyways... She pretty much saying, you know, whatever happened in the past, you know, could stay in the past. She just wants to move on for them to expand as family. They like nothing ever happened in the past. And KK was like, you know, I don't know who that. She was like, Jocelyn Hernandez is the most insecure bitch I know or whatever. And she still got that damn dog in her hand. I'm like, is she going to have that dog in her hand the whole goddamn season? I'm like, shit. Has the dog taken the shit since y'all been filming? I mean, pissed or something? Gone for a walk? Ate? Just got that show. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So, uh, she says that she's old enough to be her mom. And she knows Jocelyn is crazy. But she was like, but I'm gonna be cool to that. But she was like, but after that, teeth is gonna be out. I was like, ooh. I wonder who will win that fight between KK and Jocelyn. Because they both kind of you know got a few screws loose so yeah i wonder, I wonder who would win that um anyways um hosseline says that you know she doesn't care about kk and all this stuff and my opinion i feel like hosseline and stevie they're both insecure they're both insecure because we see how hosseline acts and everything and then you know we heard about her flipping because of you know stevie being in the studio with faith evans too much and then stevie sitting up here trying to come at rick ross in the game because of pictures that hosseline took with them so if you ask me they both insecure you know what i'm saying but anyways um like I said, Hosseline is saying she don't care about KK meeting with Stevie and her ass comes down to her ankle, ankles and all this other shit. I was like, well, damn. It's like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Trying to call her a diaper booty or whatever. And um, she says that, you know, she would pretty much she'll check her old ass if she has to or whatever. Um, so Stevie and KK, they pretty much talk about Scrappy Dappy Doo and um tiara and you know she claims that she doesn't want to see him hurt and but she can't be friends with tiara and then see if stevie is pretty much trying to be the voice of reasoning and telling her you know you got to do this for your grandson you know you got to do this for the family and everything and she's just still not too sure about it but she does want to make up with him but she doesn't know if she can do what he requests of her but we gonna get to that in a minute we get Jocelyn and uh, Mimi. They meet up or whatever. And this is the thing. They're still throwing shade at each other in the confessional. I'm just like, what was the point of making up for y'all to just still, still constantly throw shade? You know, he, she's still calling her, you know, Molly the maid and all this other stuff. And, you know, um, they go furniture, furniture shopping for uh, Mimi's new apartment. and Or new house or whatever. And, um... 
she says that Jocelyn is still crazy and everything, and that she went to L.A. to squash the whole situation. I was like, I thought y'all squashed it at the last reunion. But okay, we're going to play with the storyline. I get it. Um, but anyways, you know, um, Jocelyn, you know, she was like, I heard you got a B-I-T-C-H. She was like, I heard you got a girlfriend, you know. And um, Mimi was like, yes, I have a girlfriend. And Jocelyn pretty much tries to take credit for that. I'm just like, girl, like I said, I'm pretty sure Mimi done had other threesomes before you. Like, I don't know. Maybe you was the best one, though. I don't know. But anyways, um, she invites Mimi and Chris to, you know, her uh, viewing party and everything. And she also wants Mimi to invite the other girls since Mimi is cool with the other girls and all this other stuff. And, um, she wants to show them that, you know, she, you know, that her and Mimi went through their shit, but if they could get along, we all could get along this day and the third. And Mimi is not falling for this playing nice bullshit that Jocelyn trying to put on and, um, how, you know, she ain't been off the plane for five seconds, how she's already trying to start shit, and how her and everybody else knows how she really is. I was like, bloop! Ain't that the truth. But anyway, so, uh, she tells Mimi about KK and everything, the whole, you know, she, uh, heard that KK and Stevie had relations, and, you know, in the past, and, uh, how Celine hands Mimi the envelope, ha hands Mimi this envelope of all KK's criminal record and you know, mug shots and all that stuff. And Mimi is shocked, not because, you know, KK's, uh, KK has criminal record, but she's shocked that Stevie calls KK his sis or whatever. And Jocelyn is sitting up here digging up all this dirt and handing it to her. And, you know, um... Hosseline pretty much wants, you know, Mimi to be careful for Eva's sake or whatever. She said, we got to be ahead of them, <laughs> you know. I was like, that is true, though. You got to be ahead of the bullshit when it comes to these children. So, moving on to Scrappy Dappy Do. Him and his brother are performing their song, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, Roof. And I'm just like, you know, it's kind of catchy. It's kind of catchy, you know what I'm saying? But, um, actually, it's Sass's song. See, I thought, you know, it was, I thought maybe, uh, it was both of their songs or whatever. But it's actually Sass's song, and Scrap is pretty much being the hype man for him and everything. And I was just like, oh, okay, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure he a dog, too. Let me not say that, just because they brothers. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, you know what I mean? But, yeah, uh, the song still fits Scrap, though. He's still the motherfucking dog roof roof okay and um they got some r&b singer on the stage uh with some fucked up dreads i just i hate when people have their dreads like that i just i don't like that but um i at first i started to say how are you gonna be an r&b singer with some fucked up dreads but then i was like well fuck it i mean the weekend i'm just saying i mean i like the weekend and everything but oh i just i hate the dreads i just i hate them but anyways that's another conversation for another day um i thought the performance was cool you know what i'm saying it seemed like the crowd was vibing to it and they kind of knew the song or whatever um they got into the back they went to the back or whatever at the, the performance and they start talking about you know dollar and you know how every year for his birthday you know they go to his grave site and pay their respects and everything um sad says that he wants to invite their mother scrap not really with it because of you know their situation and scrap pretty much explains to sass what happened or whatever the next thing you know kk walks in and um claims that she wants to reach out to him but she can't give him what uh she what he wants or whatever Sass pretty much is trying to be the mediator to tell him to squash it before Dollar's birthday. And, you know, KK explains that she'll try to be at the grave site because, the, you know, Dollar has been gone for seven years. And it just still doesn't feel real that he's been gone and she's never been to the grave site since he's passed. And, um, you know, like I said, Sass is still trying to be the mediator and try to get um, their mom to see the bigger picture. And, you know, um... She's talking about, um, 
she's talking about she's gonna keep a uh, scrap from um us or whatever i could take her to court i got grandmother rights this day and the third and it's just like i had to think about it and i think the ghetto view said it shout out to her make sure y'all go watch her channel I think she said it last week. Like, Scrap does not have a case against Tierra with all this shit that he got over his motherfucking head. That is the wrong thing to tell him to take her to court when he got all this shit over his head and, like, shit is going to work out in his favor. And I do agree with her. And for Karen to sit up here and to sit up here and talk about something, she going to take her to court this, then, third. Bitch, you ain't got no motherfucking clout neither. With your criminal record, you... Are you kidding me? They gonna look at y'all. That, that judge gonna take y'all for the for a motherfucking joke. Anyway, so yeah, you ain't ain't need there one of y'all in the position to do shit. Ain't none of y'all in the position to do shit to go up against Tierra. Okay, and um, shit, the judge might be like, no, nah, this child need to stay away from y'all motherfucking asses being on America's Most Wanted and shit. And um, you know. KK is still being stubborn and saying she won't deal with Tierra, period. I'm like, well, why the fuck did you come for then? Why did you come if you was not going to sit up here and try to rectify this situation? If you were still going to be on the same bullshit that you was on the last time y'all talked? Why even fucking show up? Why? Just to be on the same bullshit. Like, you being very selfish and being very complicated. And you, and, and it's not about you. It's not even about your son. It's about your grandson. You must not care about your grandson that motherfucking much. I'm just saying. Moving on. Moving right along. Um, we get Mimi or whatever. Her and Chris, they're, you know, chilling and everything. And, you know, um, she's been saying that her and Chris been living in peace since... Stevie and Jocelyn has been gone, but now that they're now they're back and all this other stuff, you know. And um, she's saying that she's gonna ha have a housewarming party. Chris doesn't want to come because she doesn't want to be around a whole bunch of females or whatever. Um, Chris asks, you know, she asks why you know Stevie Stevie and Hosseline are back in town or whatever. And you know, Mimi is explaining to her like, you know, well, he wanted to be close to pretty much. He wanted to be close to the family and everything or whatever, this, that, and the third, including Eva. And, you know, Chris is like, you know, she don't know how to deal with baby daddies and everything. And uh, when it comes to him, she gets in her feelings a little bit. But I'm like, well, bitch, you know what the hell you signed up for when you got with Mimi. That's her child's father. He's going to be around regardless whether you like it or not. For You know, now, I do, now, but at the same time, though, I do kind of get it because... We know Mimi still, she still loves Stevie J, and really in her heart, she still want to be with him. You know what I'm saying? So, I guess I do kind of understand, but she did kind of irritate me with that a little bit, because I'm like, what, I mean, what the fuck you want him to do? Go to goddamn Mars, Jupiter, or somewhere? Like, I mean, that's his fucking child. That's, you know, um, the father of her child. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, um, Mimi tells Chris about, uh, Hosseline's party, and, you know, Chris brings up the fact that they had violent history between, you know, Mimi and Hosseline had violent history between each other, you know, with each other. And that she ain't with nobody putting hands on Mimi. And I understand that, you know what I'm saying? But um, Mimi is like, look, we're past that now. You know, this is about Eva. We have to get along for Eva. You know what I'm saying? And so um, Chris says pretty much she has to think about uh, attending the party with Mimi. So, we get Scrappy Dappy Doo and Tommy. <sighs> Tommy, she pulls up to his house into some damn lingerie. I'm like, why does she always do this shit? He's like, why? You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, she was like that she thought she was done with him or whatever. But now she, but she was like, um, now she's, um, burning to find out the man that she really been with for a whole year. She was like, you know, I be at Scrap's house all the time and everything, and I ain't never seen no chick or whatever, but she was like, but at the same time, she didn't know, um, about, uh, she never, you know, Scrap kept Tierra from her for a whole year, you know, by not having to meet and everything. So, um, it's possible he could have a third chick lying around, so... 
you know, he answers the door or whatever. She barges her way in. She's like, where the bitch at? Where the bitch at? And I'm just like, oh, Lord. You know what I'm saying? And she running up the stairs and shit. And she pushing him and all this other stuff. And you, he like, you here to fuck or you here to fight? Which one you here to do? <laughs> and I'm like, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you got on this lingerie, but at the same time, you looking for a bitch. You know what I'm saying? And um, she had a breath or whatever. And she was like, listen, Scrap. Like, fuck you and all this other bullshit. And, you know, um, she pretty much is telling him about what Hosseline told her. And he like, you know... You all up in the laundry room, you upstairs and shit. She, he was like, you know, did you find what you're looking for? Are you happy? And he was like, you know, because all you did was make yourself look stupid and foolish. You know what I'm saying? She's sitting up here like, you know, with the fake crying bullshit. And, um, and he was like, and now you want to sit up here and cry and try to play victim. And she was like, I ain't crying. Like, don't ever try to play me. I was like, this the foolishness I be talking about. I just... I, I can't. I cannot with her. I just, I can't. And um, now she's sitting up here saying that she feels like she's feeling crazy. And she doesn't know whether Jocelyn is just, you know, whether she did it just to taunt her or whatever and to play with her. Or if Scrap is really, like, making her go crazy and everything. And so she was like that it's pretty much best if she don't fuck with none of them and everything. And, um... She was like, you know, fuck you, fuck uh, your mama, fuck your extended family, Hosseline and Stevie J, fuck Tear, fuck everybody. And she, um, and he said something to her, and she was like, fuck you, and uh, what you need to be worried about, and throws a stash of money at his ass, and she was like, get money. I was like, oh girl, you might want to pick that back up, you know you're going to need that later on, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, you might need to bail yourself out of jail again. I'm I'm just saying, you know. But anyways, um, she, you know, is all up in the middle of the goddamn street or whatever. She all just flustered and just her. She ain't in the right head space. And she, I think she tried to get this truck to pull over or whatever. Producers have to grab her because she can't find her fucking keys and shit. I was just like, this girl is a motherfucking mess. Anyways, moving on, we get all the guys together. They go paintballing. Um, they also have this guy named Jay Nix along with them, and he's like a recording artist or whatever. Um, they pretty much start talking about Scrappy Dappy Doo's situation, his female woes or whatever. And um, you know, he's talking about how Tierra's trying to keep the sun the sun away from him and they all like, nah, she can't do that, or whatever. And Jay Nix knows Tierra personally. He was like, excuse me, he was like, nah, uh, next time I see her, I'ma say something to her because that's not right or whatever. And um then he starts talking about Tommy and how Jocelyn told her something that made you know, made her show up to his house and start going crazy. You know, talking about this alleged third woman. Or whatever. And Stevie was like, you know, Jocelyn running her mouth about some shit that ain't got nothing to do with her. And, you know, um, um, what's his name? Scrappy Dappy Doo. He's like, exactly. Like, I just want to get to the bottom of this shit and everything. And Stevie says that they can address the situation at the viewing party. And he was like, I see. I ain't for addressing shit at events or whatever. And he was like, nah, nah, it's cool. We fam. You know, and I was just like, I'm with Scrap on this one. I just don't see this ending too well. Um, you know, Jock says that he's learned his lesson on being in love triangles and shit. I'm like, are you sure about that? I'm just saying. Anyways, moving on, we get to Mimi's house, her little housewarming party. She invites all the girls, of course, a mi minus Jocelyn. And, um, Mimi also invites Tierra and everything. And Rashida trying to throw some shade, talk about some, you know, uh, last time I seen, um... She was like, I didn't even recognize Tierra, you know, standing up. Because the last time I seen her, she was down or whatever. I was like, well, damn. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, she won't whine, though. But still, you know. Um, she, you know, and Tierra says that she pretty much apologized to Mimi and everything for everything that happened. They asked her what the situation was. And she pretty much is, she pretty much was saying that Scrap is going through some, going through a crisis right now. And it's causing him to do stupid shit. I'm like... That nigga ain't going through a motherfucking crisis. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe he is because he's facing time in prison. But, um, and for what I hear, I, I heard he's locked up now. 
And he might be facing 20 years or something like that. But anyways, I'm just like, but it's still, I was like, you sitting up here making excuses for him or whatever. It's like, no. The bottom line is, he's sitting up here trying to play both of y'all. Y'all both sitting up here fighting each other. Y'all giving him what the fuck he want. Then he want to still keep y'all, string y'all both along to write his ass if he get locked up. <clears throat> Child, I guess. But anyways, moving on. Mimi says how she can relate and yada, yada, yada. And um, they start talking about Jocelyn and saying how her and Jocelyn are good. She tells them about, uh, tells them about the video release party. They don't want to go. You know, Tammy says how Jocelyn never apologized to her for the situation that happened at the reunion or whatever. Um, you know, two reunions ago. And, um, you know, Carly, she comes through. And Carly pretty much realizes that they all was right about hustling and everything. She tells about the meeting that she had with her and how she tried to blackmail her. And, you know, nobody is shocked at this point. You know what I'm saying? And... Carly says that she, you know, she was like, no matter how messy I think I am, I would never blackmail any of my friends. And, um, you know, Dom, she pretty much says, you know, when is, what is it going to take for you to realize this bitch don't fuck with you? She was like, you know, it took me after, it only, it took me a few times to realize that this bitch don't fuck with me like that or whatever. And, um, you know. Carly tell you know lets them know that Jocelyn and you know after all that bullshit Jocelyn had the nerve to invite her to the party, and pretty much nobody is gonna go but Mimi. Um, so we're at the party. Chris decides to come or whatever. Chris is nervous, you know, and um, she feels that their relationship is gonna have a negative impact. <clears throat> Excuse me, due to Stevie J and Jocelyn being back in town or whatever. Um, so they walk up to her, they walk up to Hosseline and everything. Hosseline is not impressed by the lease with Chris. She was like, you know, I thought Mimi was going to have like a girly girl type of girlfriend. She was like, you know, she need to get her somebody that's fly and everything. Because best believe if I'm going to be with the girl, be with the woman, she going to look like me or whatever. And, um, what else did she say? Oh, you know, Chris called, I mean, not Chris, Hosseline calls her, you know, she was like, who is this young, you know, young lady or whatever. Chris was like, well, I'm not that young and I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a lady neither. And, you know, she was like, oh, would you a thug or whatever? And he, she was like, yeah, you know, I'm a thug. You know, Chris was trying to be a good sport about the whole situation and everything. And, um, you know, Hosseline, is, she, she taunting her, she's taunting her. She's like, you know, so you gonna wear a thong and a bra? And Chris is like, no, you know, we'll talk about that later, this, then, the third. And, you know, um, how Celine gonna sit up here and, um, well, no. Mimi was like, you know, this is my girlfriend and everything. And how Celine was like, I thought I was your girlfriend. I was like, I just couldn't do nothing but laugh on that. I was like, Jocelyn, girl, stop. Fucking stop it, Okay. And, you know, uh, she asks if Chris' tongue action is better than hers. And Chris was like, you know, and she's saying all of this in the confessional. I wish she would have said it to Jocelyn. You know what I'm saying? She's saying, you know, in the confessional that, you know, um, that Jocelyn is being borderline disrespectful. I'm like, borderline? No, she is being disrespectful. And she ain't throwing shade. She's throwing the whole goddamn tree. Okay? And, you know, um... She was like, you know, I'm pretty sure Jocelyn has had plenty of threesomes. Why does she continue to bring up this one and everything? And Mimi pretty much tells her that it's not cool or whatever. That's pretty much the end of the episode. Um, y'all let me know how y'all feel about it. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys come back. Make sure you guys follow me on social media. Once again, it's in the description box below. And I will see you guys in the next video.